So this is another strange case of somebody disappearing rather quickly without a trace. And this case takes place in Columbus, Ohio. It's here on February 24th, 2019, that a 29-year-old man named Tyler Davis would disappear under strange circumstances, leaving a lot more questions than answers. So let's just get into this one. So in February of 2019, the Davis family was living in Wilmington, Ohio, which was a relatively small town compared to the surrounding cities. Tyler worked as a manager at the local Wendy's and his wife Brittany was actually a bartender. They have a small son who they loved to spend time with, but even though they loved spending time at home with their child, they still made time for each other. Specifically, they would take three days off a year and just do things together. And those three days were their anniversary and each of their birthdays. And this just happened to be one of those times that they celebrated together because February 24th was Brittany's birthday and they had planned to drive the three hour trip into Columbus, Ohio to celebrate her birthday out on the town. So on the morning of February 23rd, they would make the three hour journey into Columbus and they would meet Tyler's parents at the Texas Roadhouse that they had there. They ate lunch, had conversation, and eventually, whenever they said to say their goodbyes, Tyler's parents took their son for the night so that they could go out and celebrate. After saying goodbye to Tyler's parents, Tyler and Brittany would make their way to their hotel in Easton Town Center in Northeast Columbus, which is actually kind of like a big complex that was surrounded by malls and bars and all kinds of shopping centers. And they would check in at around 5 p.m. And that's where they would wait for one of their friends to arrive that they were going to celebrate with that night. So after their friend would arrive, the three would then go and visit a few of the bars that surrounded the area. They would have a few drinks. And eventually they would actually make their way into a gentleman's club called the Doll House. At around 2.30 a.m., they ordered an Uber to come pick them up and deliver them back to their hotel room. And at this point, it was reported that Brittany uh, stated that she remembered that Tyler was actually asleep for most of this Uber ride back to the hotel. Apparently, after the Uber had dropped them off, uh, Tyler was having such a hard time even standing that they had to help him get out of the car. And even after they helped him, he still ended up falling down. But after all was said and done, he got up. He got really irritated, and he claimed that the Uber had dropped them off at the wrong hotel. It was the correct hotel but for some reason he didn't believe it was so for the next few minutes they argued tried to convince tyler that hey this is the right hotel and for whatever reason tyler insisted that this was not their hotel and eventually he would storm off Brittany wanted to go after him but their friend said i will go after him and I have seen him do this kind of thing before. It's not a big deal. I'll get him. After Tyler takes off and his friend follows him, Brittany heads up to the hotel room. And shortly thereafter, the friend would show back up to the hotel alone and claim that Tyler told him to just go on ahead without him, that he'll be there in a few minutes. He just wanted to take a short walk and blow off some steam. And to add more comfort to that, uh, Brittany would actually re receive a call from Tyler just a few minutes later, and he seemed a lot more relaxed and calm and explained that he was going to go for a short walk, just like his friends claimed, and that he would be up there in just a few minutes. They spoke for a few more minutes, and everything seemed fine, and eventually they hung up. Brittany would receive another call from Tyler at around 4 a.m., and it was basically the exact same conversation that they had before, that he was still just walking and that he would be up to the hotel room soon. But the thing that was a little different on this one was he claimed that he was walking in a wooded area and that he could see the hotel and that he would be there shortly, which seemed kind of odd, mainly because where they were, like I said before, was mostly surrounded by malls and shops and bars and stuff like that. There are a few other areas that are a little wooded but that's where he claimed to be and even though everything seemed fine on the phone call this would actually be the last time anybody ever actually talked to Tyler again 
Now, Brittany did receive another call from Tyler that night, and when she answered, there was no real response on the phone. It was just kind of a dead air, and eventually the call was dropped. Brittany tried to call him back multiple times, but every time she did, it went straight to voicemail, and at this point, panic started to kind of set in. So she did call Tyler's parents, any friends that they had around the area that Tyler might have walked to, and she did eventually call the police. As you know, with many of these missing people cases, whenever you first call the police, they'll inform you that if a person's not missing for at least 24 hours, they're not quite considered a missing person, and they won't really look into it too much. But eventually, the police did come in less than 24 hours, and they did form a search. Actually, eventually, they formed multiple searches, but unfortunately, all of these searches turned up nothing. Even more strange is that they did check the security footage around the area, and even though this is a very heavily surveillanced area, only one camera ever picked up Tyler, and that's whenever he first arrived at the hotel. So eventually, days turned into weeks, and the police were still looking for him, and eventually they would get access to his search history on his phone, and it showed that at one point he Google searched or, you know, asked his phone for directions back to the hotel. Now, that was a pretty good indicator that he was not just leaving his family behind and running off like some people claim that that's what they thought was happening. Um, let me see here. One detective, Brommer, said, What it showed me was intent. It showed me that Tyler wasn't trying to sneak off and have a life somewhere else. It showed me I want to go home. So, again, this is one of those cases where this person was here in a very heavily surveillance area. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense that he could just literally vanish. And that's exactly what happened. Now, I did jump on Google Maps and the area of where their hotel room is, or their hotel was, and there are a couple areas that are heavily forested. But it doesn't make any sense that he's literally on his way back to the hotel. He couldn't have been more than five minutes from his hotel. And then he just gone. Sadly, no evidence of what really happened to Tyler has ever been found. And it's truly one of those cases of somebody being here one minute and then gone the next. Honestly, I hope that they do find him. Whether he passed away or not. If he did run off to start another life. Which I don't believe he did. I hope they find him to give peace to the family. Um, Tyler was eventually declared deceased on December 15th, 2021. And that is about all the updates that we have for now. With that being said, I appreciate you guys. I want to give a quick shout out to Tyler West for being a supporter of the channel. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.